Oh, hello there, and uh, it is I, your professor, Scott, and uh, there's a bit of a bright light on me there, so I'm getting uh, halation in my eyes, but nevertheless it will illuminate this screen so that you'll be able to see what I'm doing this week. Now, some of you have asked me, what's that stuff you're using for drawing? It's not the pencils, and that's true because... The pencils are too faint for large scale stuff and, you know, especially that I'm doing them very quickly as demonstrations. So I, I got this uh, charcoal stuff, compressed charcoal, and it comes in different shapes and sizes and uh, softnesses and hardnesses. But um, for your purposes, you're welcome to try that out later if you want to get charcoal, uh, but uh, you know, pencils are easier, cheaper, and uh, certainly for what you're doing on these, I presume, small sheets of paper about that size, like the standard computer printing paper, they are perfectly fine. Now we're moving through this skeleton piece by piece, and last week was a really easy uh, exercise where you drew the, um, arm bone and most of you did really fantastic jobs you know I'm very impressed with this class this semester and uh, you know I'm telling those who are not really getting it uh, you know giving them tips and clues but you know it's one of those things that you have to keep trying it and pushing yourself forward and pushing through the barriers inside you you know that's what art is really about there are barriers inside us which block us from things and art is really about you pushing through those barriers and experiencing yourself, you know, who you are. That's the important thing. And uh, so this week we are looking at Fritz who's still been standing there all week waiting for you patiently. Are you, aren't you a paragon of patience, Fritz? Indeed I am. So you always wait for them? Always, always, always. So Fritz, what are you going to show us this week? The hand. So there is his hand. And you can see here, I'm going to demonstrate it. It's all jointed, you see, and there's marvelous intricate bones, even very similar to the foot. Very similar to the foot, which you've already done. And some of you did the foot very well. My only criticism of one or two of them is that you did the toes, um, bones, very thin and far too far apart. So try and get a sense of the dimensions of this thing this time. Now this is another one that's difficult. The foot was difficult, the arm bone was easy. So this is a difficult exercise this week. So, you know... You could freeze that frame. There we are. The bones of the hand. Very intricate. And it leads down to here where... Oh God, I'm getting some compressed charcoal on it. It leads down to this collection of bones which have names like scaptoid, I think. And... Uh, it's around the carpal area. This is the wrist bones. Because, again, you know, you're learning about the anatomy. For the flexibility of the wrist, you need all these intricate bones. You know, you're not just a machine that goes clamp, 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 clamp. You've got all these little bones down there that allow the dexterity and flexibility of the wrist where you can get people who can play musical instruments like violins, violas, if you've ever done that at high school, you'll know that, you know, you need all those movements. And the same with art. So while you're drawing this hand with your own hand, I want you, you know, this is a kind of awareness class as well as anatomy class and technical class. So you're developing an awareness of your inner being, your skeleton in this case. And you are looking at how your hand is moving while you're drawing bones that are inside that hand that are doing the movements that allow you to draw the bones of the hand. So it's like a kind of 
multilinear sequential sequence of understanding of your being right here now. This moment right here now. So I'll let Fritz rest. And there he goes. Now, as well as the drawings I sent you, here they are. Can you see them? There they are. As well as these drawings that I've sent you through the uh, United States Postal Service, you are welcome to just Google hand uh, bones on the internet and find whatever image is there. You know, it's no need to waste money on books or anything like that. And just use that as your reference material as well. So with this, uh, oh, come on Dave. That's a tight thing, that. With this, you're looking at lots of little bones. You've got that a tip of the finger bone here at the top. Then you've got that one that's a bit larger coming down here, the kind of central second bit. And then again, you know, the thing is to get the bones with the right shape. So this curls out a bit. It's... Like I said with the arm bone, it's got a twist in it. These ones are not just straight shapes. They've got all this stuff going on inside them. Let me go to this one here. Is it? The two drawings I sent you, I hope uh, you got both of them. One of them has got the hand with just the, the fingers and the other one has included <clears throat> the thumb. So let's use it. And I'm glancing over at Fritz's hand, just checking that he's, uh, he's a good model, he never moves. So I'm going to do these thumb bones. And he's again the same process. Now it goes in and out like that. You know, there's that kind of curve in there. And then there's that little tip. Now the thumb is a very important device in the hand. It's what allows it to do a lot of incredibly intricate things. And uh, there are no real... I'm just thinking, you know, if the great apes have it, but there is no real equivalent of that dexterity of the thumb in the animal kingdom. So it's the thing that really allows us to do so much uh, intricate work. And if you've injured your thumb, you'll know what I'm talking about because it's bloody annoying. You know, I did it years ago and uh, it took a while, you know, to, to get back to normal. So it's one of those things that you, you don't think about it until you, you need it. So I'm going to do this one now, this, this uh, arm. These drawings have, the ones I sent you contain also the uh, muscles. So that's the top finger, that little top bit here comes out. And this longer bone leading down into the wrist. Mm -hmm. I'm always checking the camera to make sure that it's picking up this. Uh... So you're, you know, basically I'm just wanting you to get a sense of the shapes, you know, that each bone is not just straight up and down like that. It's going, okay. it's got little curves in it, you know, so it's not quite that much, but it's, you know, it's got a kind of, you can see it's going in here a bit, it's going in there a bit, you know, it's going in there at the sides. They're not just straight fingers like rulers, you know, there's a, a sense of them. What am I doing here? I'm wanting you to become more sensitive to what you see. So 
becoming aware of what you're seeing, becoming aware of your circumstances, becoming aware of who you are, becoming aware of what is going on inside your thought processes, becoming aware of other people around you, becoming aware of the environment around you is the purpose of learning how to become a real artist. It's a sensitivity enhancement and an awareness enhancement. You don't want to end up in this life as a unaware, insensitive person. And, you know, you see those people every day. Just go out into the subway today and you'll encounter at least one or two insensitive and unaware people. They don't care about other people. They don't care about themselves. Not because they're evil, it's because they haven't developed their sensitivity and awareness. So as artists, you know, you're, you're, you're lucky that you're able to develop that sense of yourself, that sense of sensitivity and that sense of awareness so that you're able to become a real human being, a human being. That's important and that's what makes us artists and not machines. A machine has no awareness and a machine has no sensitivity. You know? So I'm doing these wrist bones very quickly. These are the scaps. The only one I know of that is the name is the scaptoid or something like that. But there's lots of them in there and I'm just kind of waffling over that because they're kind of intricate. That's it. And that leads down to that wrist. So there it is, pretty quickly done, and uh, the arm, the hand bones, and, uh, try and get that done a bit better. So if you can manage anything like that, that's fine this week, you know, it's a trickier week, it's a little bit more complicated, and uh, you're going to try and get those bones, and as I said, you know, they're not straight, they've got that curving bit that goes in there, curving bit that goes in there, curving bit that goes, you know, it's not quite like straight up and down. So you're looking at it and you're, you're getting that sense of the thing being bones, you know, and the more you understand this, the better artist you're going to be. It's not an overnight process becoming an artist. A lot of you imagine that I'm going to be able to program you like computers and you're instantly going to become artists. No, it's a lot of work. If it was easy, everybody would want to be an artist and become one. But it's a lot of work and I can tell you that from my own experience, it's not easy, but it's worthwhile. So let me see what you can do. Submit it in the usual process and have it sent to me before the midnight on the Sunday. So this week, the anatomy of the hand, the bones. I've got to admit, I never remember all the names of the bones inside the skeleton. I mean, I know rib cage and femur and things like that, but the name of these little bones down here, my little brain can't remember them. So don't worry, you know, we're not uh, scientists. But just try and get the sense of the hand today. Any um, extra material you need, Google hand bones or skeleton's hand or whatever and just look at that and then send it in to me and let me see what you're doing and if it's okay I'll say my usual thing perfect well done fantastic uh, good grade and if there's anything that needs criticism I'll tell you and uh, you can uh, work on that to improve yourself okay that's it for now so thank you very much today Fritz's skeleton hand there. That's it. You can freeze that frame should you want to. The bones of the hand. And that's it. Rather quickly done. But I'm sure a lot of you will do even better than your old professor. Thank you very much, my dears. Bye for now. Take care. Uh, and if the weather's good, take a walk outside and get some fresh air.